Hello friends, this is Lada and us here. Hi everyone. And we are again in Ithaca. This is one of our Cayuga Lake talks and that's a Finger Lake in upstate New York. We're in this uh, beautiful park. It is uh, Stewart Park. As you see, uh, there is Cayuga Lake there and uh, all kinds of boats. I don't know if you can see them through the vegetation here, but it's a beautiful Saturday. So we were walking in the park and we were discussing how I wanted to start sharing with all of you guys on YouTube, on my blog Futures Trendcast, uh, not to mention, of course, with my patrons on Ladre Patreon, everywhere really. I want to share more videos and more discussions about my teachings, about the Earth shift, the great rebalancing, the multidimensional teaching, quantum calibration uh, theory and all that. I thought that I, I would start doing various videos and audios and uh, of course I do a lot of articles on Patreon. I, of course, you, some of you read my book, uh, Geopolitical and Geoeconomic Quantum Calibrations, where I discuss a lot of my theories, as well as give you lots of practical examples of almost 100 countries around the world and how they calibrate and uh, uh, my predictions for those countries and much, much more. Of course, some of you have listened to my webinars and if you haven't, I am inviting you to check out on ladere.com under webinars, the new series, series three, COVID-19 and 2020-2026 predictions. So this new series of webinars about the catalyst that COVID has become for the world for the transition of the world into lower 4D, that's part of my multidimensional theory and earth shift theory as well, and for many events that are happening around the world. And upcoming webinar 14 will in fact touch upon the timeline as well as explain about the culmination of period eight, beginning of period nine, part of my earth shift theory, of course, as well as astrological phenomena and the dawn of the Aquarian age, and the galactic dawn that we are experiencing. So all these things I'm gonna begin sharing with you, sharing publicly. If you want systemic knowledge, that would be, please go to my webinars, check out ladere.com and there are lots of free information there, as well as of course, you can buy webinars and uh, I also have my consultations. So today we're, we were walking around this park and a beautiful breeze here nice weather beautiful weather it's like 78 degrees about 80 right yeah sunny it's about yeah it's about perfect exactly you know that's what we want our summer to be <laughs> i hope it is it gets uh, oftentimes much warmer and uh, not always is this sunny and beautiful as you see beautiful sky also perfect no chemtrails today right <laughs> they they were bombing with chemtrails uh, for two three days and we turned on all of our CDs, the earth pipe, all of our uh, everything, intention, what we do with chemtrails and how to combat them. Well, we'll teach you that sometime too, right, Us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. And uh, uh, so today we will, we are walking around and uh, as you know, there are all kinds of uh, very um, uh, crisis-like events happening in the U.S. right now. And I didn't want to talk about politics, geopolitics, or current affairs today. What I wanted to do, I was telling us that I wanted to give a higher dimensional perspective on everything that is happening around us today and generally what is happening and why it's happening. Yeah, heading into period nine. Right. It's like heading, a preview. Right. It's a preview of period nine. And it's a, we will discuss period eight and pre, period nine, what those are. We discuss that in webinars. So go to webinars, please. That's webinar four and webinar 14, talk about it. But also the entire current series, COVID-19 Catalyst and 2020-26 predictions talks about these things. But I also wanted to give you sort of like an update and uh, this like talk about how higher dimensionally it all feels, of what it means from the perspective of uh, a highly calibrated being. Quantum calibrations, of course, is one of my theories. And so according to quantum calibrations, where all this is, how does it calibrate? And so we walk around the park and we come across this pavilion, uh, which yeah. is locked up right now. Yeah, it's a picnic house. Well, the park is open. 
of course, everywhere on the picnic house, on uh, the pier and the, the tables. Uh, tables, right? And on the road, there where people jog and walk with uh, babies. There are these yeah. words. Yeah, uh, these uh, graffiti spray paint, paint yeah. uh, saying uh, "We can't breathe" right. collectively as a civilization. You we know, can't we're, breathe. We're that's shut. no. That's the. Uh, the protests in the U.S. because right. of police brutality. Right. That's what. That's one of their slogans for the protesters, mm -hmm. right? right? Because of Black Lives Matter. And Black Lives Matter, and we cannot breathe, all over graffiti, all over, mm -hmm. especially in that pier where there's plenty of fresh air, of course. And uh, us wanted to sit down in the pier and enjoy himself. We even have a couple of pictures of that. Maybe I'll share that on Patreon. And it was like such a discord with this beautiful peaceful energy and of course the whole situation in the US is because it was meant to happen it was supposed to happen we'll discuss it in different uh, talks not in this one this one is, is about something else this was um, begging to happen there is a lot of karma involved here US has done so many things I talked to you for years about what US has done in uh, Ukraine in Russia and that's just taking countries that are closest to me Latin and America. China, Latin America, Africa, the Middle East, all over the world, really, truly, all of post-Soviet space, uh, everywhere in Europe too, by the way, in some, at least some parts of Europe uh, and probably the majority of Europe will say, and we, we, us too, us too, you know, we have grievances as well. So US has done so much and I've been predicting that karma will come back to bite them in the ASS eventually. But this talk is not about that. So but I commented to us, you know what, this is my only weekend uh, that I can I can actually get some breaths of fresh air and be on the lake and I finally got out and I want to have this beautiful day in the sun and uh, these uh, words everywhere, this graffiti, I, we cannot breathe, we cannot breathe and I could not breathe. And I said, I cannot stay here. Let's go to another side of the park where there are no such signs because all this, all this graffiti, to me, being an empath mm -hmm. and the uh, higher calibrated soul and all that, for me, that's, I feel it. I feel their rage, their pain. We are talking calibrations. At best, it's uh, 150, which is anger. That's at best. And beyond that, there is so much grief, there is so much pain. Well, that's calibration below 100. That's between 85 and uh, 99. That's like life-threatening calibrations, not just life-diminishing like anger is. And uh, of course, anger, that's like already uh, going up on, on the scale. Right. Yeah, because it's all a matter of perspective. Because I know from your higher dimensional perspective, you register it as pain, you know, as suffering, as uh, something that's very negative. Whereas uh, for a majority of humanity that's coming from a lower dimensional perspective, it could actually, for them, like Black Lives Matter movement, it could be empowering or even inspirational because they're lifting up from despair, you know, from uh, pain and suffering. So uh, yeah. it, it can only be a better movement. They can, only, they can only do better. Yes, in other words, anger mm -hmm. is empowering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talk about this in my quantum calibrations that anger between 150 and 174, that's the calibration that is below 200, the minimum positive life sustaining calibration is 200, starting at 200, that's courage, right? And of course, uh, the higher you go, the more life sustaining, uh, sustaining it is, and then it becomes life creating at some point and life creating starts at 400 reason so 150 to 174 can be empowering for somebody who truly suffered and was living in grief fear fear is 100 through 124 uh, but that's even well fear too yes in that in, in the community of course uh, see i fe felt all that i felt, felt not only that pain but also this anger and everything yeah. and i started suffocating mm -hmm. we cannot breathe became like you know a physical sensation for me i mm -hmm. uh, and we we just i just had to like quickly move away from that area oh, yeah. just to restore my breathing as you see my breathing is fully restored but 
it took uh, took us uh, 15 minutes walking on isolated trails in the woods to restore my breathing and then I got back to myself basically that's the curse that's the gift but also the curse sort of of an impasse and uh, you know I learned to embrace it my sensitivity because I put it out as a, as a service to humanity to help others understand through my consultations through my teachings through my explanations of all this so I want to do more of these free videos for you guys because until now I was kind of sharing it um, with my my group my uh, uh, advanced group on ladder a patreon and my webinars um, consultations with my clients and all that but i want more people to find out about how i work what i do about my ideas about uh, my teachings and my theories so what uh, is important to understand here is absolutely as is so correct in what he just said this is like could not say it better myself it depends on perspective and on your calibration. So, so obviously, if for people, anger becomes an inspiration, what does it tell us? That they, unfortunately, I feel so terribly sorry for them, they existed in calibrations that will, were usually below 100, or at least below 125, which is, so it's fear, right? Then below that, we have grief, grief, despondency, pain, that uh, starts at 75 until 99. Then below that we have apathy, 50 to 74, apathy or apathy. They existed in apathy. And below that is shame and guilt. And below that, of course, death. So it doesn't go as far as death. So here people are awakening and their first calibration that they can reach mm. is anger because to them that sounds like liberation because they're finally expressing all those suppressed energies mm -hmm. that were totally suppressed and oppressed previously in them so it comes out in these ugly forms mm -hmm. and that's what revolutions are about by right. the way that's that's what all kinds of like outbursts revolts look like and sound like well that's part of the struggle of the oppressed you know it's actually uh, within a 2d two-dimensional context it's literally life and death you yeah. Know, if you have, uh, you know, this Gestapo SS police who is uh, trying to kill you in every turn, obviously you're going to feel very threatened. Yeah. Well, yes, if, if there, so is, uh, there are such instances. I have to say that police in the U.S. Are, is trying to do everything to pacify the situation and to do damage control. Uh, how successful that is, we'll see. I don't want to touch upon these political matters here. I actually want to talk higher dimensional response to this and uh, Oz was telling me that when I told them that my reaction is like I feel that pain so acutely mm. I, I actually cannot stand this anymore and that anger I have to move away you, you remember Star Trek right yeah there was an old original series Star Trek episode which I found uh, lends very well to this story and that's that uh, from a higher dimensional perspective that episode featured this alien race who were basically watchers, as Lada would call it, or they're just observers. So they're like, higher dimensional race. Yeah, they're multi higher dimensional watchers. And right. they just, no judgment, they just want to see how lower consciousness beings react. Yes. So uh, it's well known that uh, from the original series that humans and Klingons, which are two different species, two different races. I think everybody knows Star Trek. <laughs> they, so they're yeah. eternal enemies. Yeah, humans so, they, and so they're always right. fighting. And, mm -hmm. this, uh, and this high dimensional being, they figured, well, let's see what would happen if we put them in a controlled environment as an experiment. So they took the two captains who were supposed to be leaders of their Captain ship. Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk mm -hmm. and this other captain of the Klingon fleet. Mm -hmm. and, they, and, they, and they put each captain in this isolated planet and see what they would do. Mm -hmm. Would they work together and try to resolve the issue and try to, you know, get back to their ship? Right. Or would they, what would happen? So, of course, being natural enemies, they started bickering and then they started fighting. And at one, at one point, they just wanted to kill each other. Right. Because they figured uh, there's nothing to lose. And, of course, right. the Klingon, coming from a lower consciousness, they're a race of warriors. And mm -hmm. they just want to kill. So... Instead of working together, they started trying to kill each other. So uh, working together would mean higher 4D. Right. Okay, we're going into my multidimensional theory here. Mm -hmm. 
working together is either higher 4D or 5D. Mm. That's cooperation. Cooperation. Yeah. cooperation. That's reason, yeah, trying to uh, solve humanity. Problem. Well, they're not rising. See, Star Trek was, a, I'm going to say a word later about Star Trek, beautiful, brilliant, visionary, visionary series, amazing, in yeah, fact. For the time. For, the, for its time, completely revolutionary and evolutionary, of course. Yeah. Uh, so big thumbs up. Uh, you know, even I'm a big fan and uh, not every episode and not mm -hmm. everything that they portray there mm -hmm. um, chimes with my understanding of things. Sometimes it's like way too humanized and way too rudimentary, like for example, way too physical, like a lot right. of fighting. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there is a lot of like it calibration between reason and humanity and compassion. That's 400 calibration. Mm -hmm. And then humanity compassion in my skills starts at 480 mm -hmm. until 499. So between 400 and 499. So uh, meantime, they're portraying this higher dimensional race who mm -hmm. are between reason that's right. that's where they are between reason and humanity right. and they want to observe and they want to learn right, right. meantime these captains they are basically portraying here mm -hmm. approaches that are different one is more reasonable than another yet however they both fight right, right. so mm -hmm. tell the rest yeah of the it's really story. interesting because towards the end uh, Captain Kirk, he's very savvy and, and uh, he's very good with the hand-to-hand -hand combat. He actually gets the better of the Klingon and uh, the Klingon actually starts to admit defeat and says, okay, you got me, you, why don't you just kill me already? And Captain Kirk says, uh, no, this doesn't resolve anything. You know, we need to seek peace within our race and even if we never make it out of here, I'm not going to kill you. So he lets him go. And mm -hmm. so, all of a sudden, the aliens appear, and he says, well, we're very surprised, this is very curious, because uh, for what we know of uh, humanoids, you, got, you people are savages, that mm -hmm. all you want to do is kill each other right. uh, for superiority. <laughs> mm -hmm. And he says, I'm surprised, Captain, why you would uh, spare his life. And he says, well, th we are trying to get beyond human nature and try to evolve mm -hmm. so that we can uh, work together to and he says, and he says, by the way, you have no right to to, to kidnap us from our ship and conduct this experiment. This is uh, this this is against our free will. Right. And so the Klingon stands up and says, Yeah, this is against our free will. We have the <laughs> right to to uh, self determination, and you can't do this to us. And so there, they were united. In yeah, free they, will, they right? started uniting. Okay, so uh, let me go back to dimensions here. I, again, this is a whole teaching, so I cannot tell you the whole story here because there is um, first dimension, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, mm -hmm. ninth, uh, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, and. 12 dimensions just in our known universe mm -hmm. and then there are other universes so there are dimensions that are way past 12 dimensions that are perceived easily in this universe and uh, some might say there are 124 dimensions overall because there are higher dimensions where basically archangels uh, and uh, above exist and i'm not even going to go into that uh, so the, the dimensions in which you know and, and that uh, Please understand that this is, we are putting labels on this, but it is in the higher dimensional world is perceived differently. I'm just trying to quantify it from the point of view that is understood by humans, like numerology, for example, is understood by humans well enough because numbers is one of the building blocks of the universe. And it is very good to basically put all, all this like, you know, stack the hierarchy of the world this way. Uh, and it's easier to understand it. But of course, dimensions flow into each other and they interact and we all believe Along with multiple dimensions but there's always a predominant dimension and then for example we currently exist in predominantly 3d third dimension and we are transitioning slowly into lower 4d lower fourth dimension and all this is discussed in my new series of webinar series 3 i will link it in the description box below this video series 3 of webinars covid 19 catalyst and 2020 2026 predictions i specifically talk in several of these there are four webinars all together about 4d and how we're transitioning the sign of transitioning and the predictions and the main trends that you know how this is uh, 
this transition is occurring, who is benefiting, who is not benefiting, what kind of jobs, what kind of areas of the world, what kind of uh, even investments and how you can plan for the future and all that. That's all in, the, in this new series of webinars. So um, basically, what, what kind of dimensions are we, we seeing here? Well, I didn't watch that episode, uh, as just uh, described it to me, and so the higher dimensional beings they look to me like 6D or maybe even above, maybe even 7D, but not above that. Not angelic dimension, which starts at, in 8D. Uh, so, yeah, six, because they seven, didn't because they're just observers. They actually didn't want to help the humanoids. Well, yeah, 6D and 7D very much into observation, also into building blocks, like such as their creators. Yeah, they create. Uh, constructs, systems, etc. So when you see some some creation of a system, that's six seven D. If uh, somebody ardently, pa passionately wants to help you, humanity and better humanity and uh, assist and all that and empathy and everything, that's already eight D and above. Could be ten D and eleven, etc. Well, in in those dimensions like uh, nine, ten, uh, eleven, twelve, it's already. A, even a different story, and I'm not even going to go there. But what do we see here with Klingons? What dimension do you think that is? <laughs> well, Klingons uh, exhibit two-dimensional tendencies because he actually admitted that, well, clearly you're superior, you know, you're uh, godlike compared to us. Uh, so but what how are you gonna... dare you uh, no, but, but... interfere with our free will? Right. <laughs> and and so what do you what do you want to do with us? Are you going to kill yeah. us? I, he actually said, "Are you going to kill us?" Mm -hmm. Well, because that's all he perceives, and right. that is two D. You are yeah. absolutely correct. Yeah. That second dimension, and at the very best, uh, lower third dimension. But actually, the way Klingons are portrayed in the old series, mm -hmm. that's two D. You know, the new Star Trek yeah, discovery, right? Uh, that's already lower to mid 3D. Mm -hmm. You see some of that. That's like devotion, dedication, already understanding what some of them get it and others don't. Right. What is best for their species right. and maybe better for their species is not always to fight, but uh, sometimes maybe even to make some kind of deal with the enemy mm -hmm. and uh, That's reconcile. For self also for development, right. not just self-preservation, but so that to thrive, right. basically. So they're striving now to thrive. That's already mid-3D, actually. That's as high as it goes in the new Star Trek Discovery, for Klingons specifically. But in the old series, they are definitely second dimension, which is like, uh, you're either our friend or our enemy, with us or against us. Remember Bush was saying these things? Yeah. I think we have... Uh, There's three planes, okay. <laughs> three planes. Those seem military planes, right? Uh -huh. That's why everybody's looking at them suddenly. Everybody <laughs> stopped doing what they're doing and looking. I'm not gonna shift the camera because I yeah, don't want. So to wrap up the story, so these higher intelligent beings, higher dimensional beings, they just said that. Well, it was a very interesting experiment. Uh, now we understand a better uh, clarity of, of humans and Klingons. Uh, we would have to leave you now because your presence is very painful to us. Painful and to we us. cannot tolerate you anymore. So yeah, we'll please don't come back. So don't ever come so, back, right? So, <laughs> blink of an eye, they peer both back into their respective ships. Yeah, and they suddenly go straight back. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, exactly. That's how I felt looking at all those uh, signs, all those, that graffiti mm -hmm. everywhere. And it was everywhere. I wanted to walk to the other side of the park. And I literally could not. And Az was inviting me to stay with him on that pier. And the water is lapping and the pier is like shifting and drifting and all that. It's like that kind of drifting pier. And uh, I simply could not do that because it's slapped everywhere in red paint. Mm. We cannot breathe. Right. That's I mean, how you, can you possibly yeah, relax red, red in that? Blood. <laughs> yes, uh, we get yeah. it. Thank you, Oz, for clarifying. <laughs> well, because uh, in case you didn't. See the well, it's not the laughing matter, okay? Right. We are not laughing. Mm -hmm. We are basically covering up. Uh, right now, for example, the moment I started talking about it, I again feel very queasy. And uh, so I want to go back to the higher dimensional explanation of everything. And our focus today is generally to talk about high, how it is perceived higher dimensionally. So, uh, yes, so I felt exactly like that. And 
going back to um, Captain Kirk and his reaction and human uh, take on this. So see what humans represented there and Captain Kirk is, uh, yes, courage while the captain of the Klingon ship represented basically anger is as high as he went, but he was covering up his anger, you know, like kill me is seemingly a scourge, but it really is anger. It's really defiance, defiance calibrated anger. And the anger, I'm, I'm reminding you, is below 200, the minimum positive calibration, the minimum life-sustaining calibration. And uh, it's also uh, obviously life-diminishing, but also he's covering up his grief and even shame. Shame is 20 to 29, that's near death. If you follow that downward trajectory, that's anger, then below that to grief, despondency, then below that to shame, that's already 20, and then death, that's zero. That's, that's it, that's the end of everything. Uh, that's uh, destructive, fully, fully destructive energy. And uh, so what Captain Kirk is, his courage, not killing your enemy, sparing the enemy, that's noble courage. That's not even 200. I uh, classify it as 240. That's the energy, 240 to 249, that's noble courage. So that's the courage in which there is dignity already. It's not just confrontational courage. You don't want confrontation at all cost because you're so courageous and you look danger in the eye. Sure, he can win the battle, but he can also stop on time. So that's already a higher dimension. And what dimension that is? That is lower, uh, I'm sorry, that's high 3D high 3D, okay? In each dimension, I classify, I divide it into three levels. Each level in each dimension, it actually acts very differently. They have common characteristics and then they have psychological and behavioral characteristics that are very different from one level to another. So it's not even mid 3D, it is actually high 3D and then goes into lower 4D. That's what he is. He, perceives the actual outcome in the matters of the heart and mind as more important than actually staying physically alive. Mm -hmm. That's why he, because you know, he's in danger now. Right. What if that Klingon uh, somehow, when he's asleep and he's not looking, kills him, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because that could happen. But he perceives higher mind matters as more important than his physical life already. That's already 4D. Even could jump to high 4D, but uh, generally speaking, if they're fighting, they're not displaying high 4D. It's like high 3D through uh, low 4D. Also value of life starts there as well. The life is already valued. Hence, uh, this is life-sustaining calibration. The first one, be between 200 and 249, that's courage. Okay, so basically, uh, th that's, we basically in this one episode, what are we seeing? We are seeing this really great, very nice um, kind of setup where multi-dimensional universe is explained to us, and that was done in the 60s, right? Yeah. That yeah. was in the 60s. 60s. That's actually pretty amazing. Yeah. Pretty amazing because that's why um, Gene Roddenberry, right? Yeah. The creator, a was visionary. a true visionary. Right. He did it back then. Of course, a lot of that is too physical, but he had to be physical in order to appeal yeah, to, to mass uh, consciousness, consciousness at that time, and even today on the right. planet. Mm -hmm. It's still very physical today. Mm -hmm. It is more elaborate the way they did the new series. Um, but it's still awfully physical um, but at the time especially they had to appeal to mass consciousness which was extremely 3d mm -hmm. at that time it, actually truly amazing I, I have to say that that, that was mm -hmm. wonderful so anything else yes so what do you say about a race of beings that glorify death like like Klingons they, 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 ah, they glorify death yeah that's like uh, you die for cause two-dimensional mm -hmm. society okay. and they the best they will do is lower 3d that's where reason, reason and the survival mechanism actually begins in lower 3D, mm. but not much. That's really, truly, um, you know, very physical and very like uh, us versus them. So complete split between yin and yang, which is another part of my theory. And yin and yang, 
are the two major building blocks of the universe, receptive and uh, nurturing versus a sort of aggressive, uh, you know, dark light uh, and, uh, you know, um, things that are like sustaining versus things that are revolutionary, for example, like, you know, balance between the two must be observed ideally. And that only starts in fifth dimension when beings understand cooperation and balance before that actually also starts in uh, high 4D. That's high 4D already, people understand balance, but not entirely, but not entirely. 5D, that's when they truly, they already own it. But from a Klingon's lower perspective, they, they actually view uh, their overcoming death as a sign of courage. Like, I am willing to die from, from my beliefs, you know, because I'm not afraid of death. Yeah, that's anger. That's the level of anger. Mm -hmm. Willing to die for your beliefs, that's a revolution. Mm -hmm. Revolutions are built that way. Mm -hmm. When somebody goes into the fray, and you know, that's going back, we did full circle to the current events in the USA. And not just in the USA, you know, there are protests and uh, clashes going on everywhere. But they consider that courage. <laughs> it is from the point of view of those who bottled up so much emotion, energy, resentment, suppression, oppression. You know, yeah. you know, I don't have to tell the whole story. It's all over the news, it's all over everywhere. Yeah. The media, yeah. YouTube, anybody can go, I am giving you this higher dimensional perspective and actually multi-dimensional perspective. And we are talking about dimensions and how all this is reflected in this universe, um, in our current reality, that is. All right, guys, so that was our update for today. Beautiful day. I hope you're all enjoying your weekend and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Hello friends, Lada Ray here. I created a new series of four Earthshift webinars to help you navigate these turbulent and fast-changing times, and I want to tell you about them. The name of this new series is COVID-19 Catalyst and 2020-2026 Predictions. As a result of the Earthshift and its catalyst COVID-19, much will be reworked and rethought in our world in the next few years. This series is important if you want to understand what and why is happening worldwide and in your backyard, if you want to orient yourself with ease as to the present and future, if you want to not just survive but thrive in our fast-shifting world. Each webinar has its own focus and a set of topics, each builds on the previous. I recommend you buy the full series in order to get the complete picture. The webinars are live videos of Tila Dre. Each consists of main video talk and a Q&A. Some may have additional written and video bonuses. Webinars are priced very affordably, and despite the relative shortness of this series, it is rich in revelations and breakthrough ideas and predictions. You know me. <laughs> First in series, webinar 11, Democrats and Project Chimerica, who created COVID-19, was released on April 30th. We delve into a possible global conspiracy and the facts pointing at two or more countries' collusion. We look into at the trail pointing at COVID being a synthetic virus, where it may have originated from and why it spread out of Wuhan. I reveal to you the details of Project Chimerica and who is behind it. Second in new series, webinar 12, Earthshift and COVID-19, the catalyst of change, was released just recently on May 17th. This webinar is your compass to the unfolding Earthshift and events that catalyze it. Why are we in the midst of major shifts? How catalysts and black swan events work to expedite the Earthshift? How incremental timeline shifts create a different reality? This is the most comprehensive and future-oriented webinar of series 3 and it includes 17 new trends I've identified and 13 new multidimensional futures predictions by La Dere. Third in Series 3, coming in the end of May, Webinar 13, Global Economy, 4D Shift After Isolation. We talk about economy and international trade, why the replacement of petrodollar is happening so slowly and what the future holds. We discuss the real economic situations of China, USA, Russia, UK, Europe, Australia, Canada, 
Canada, Asia and Latin America, and how the current crisis is catalyzing the shift to a different economic, financial and trade model. And finally in this series, coming in June, date to be decided, webinar 14 from Pisces to the Aquarian Age, 2020 through 2026 timeline predictions. We talk about the galactic dawn and the dawn of the age of Aquarius, how Neptune, Saturn and period 9 shift will change the world. This webinar focuses on unseen forces that facilitate and catalyze the greater shift and on something highly requested by my clients, the timing of changes. I predict and explain from a higher dimensional perspective why these changes are necessary and when and how they may be occurring. Also, I will discuss and emphasize for you how to prepare to these changes. All webinars are available at ladderay.com. Click on links located in the description box and comment section below this video or go directly to ladderay.com and click on webinars tab on top. Also to mention, exclusive offer for all Series 3 participants, limited time, biggest ever discount on Big Picture Series 1 and 2. Buy one or more Series 3 webinars and get 50 to 60% off on prior series. Includes all past bestsellers, The Future of Money, The Putin Enigma, Inverted Collapse, Period 8 Predictions, plus all Forbidden History webinars. These are all Big Picture foundational webinars and they really are a great prerequisite to understand the current series. After purchase, you'll find private sale links at the bottom of your webinar page. Hope you enjoy my new webinar series and see you soon.